Hey everyone, my name is Dave. Welcome to the NTD Racing Ranch. This is our new Class 11 we're going to be building out, hopefully for the Min 400. It's going to get really cold by March, so we need to paint this thing now, even before we have a roll cage in there. So that's what we're doing today. It's going to be a two-part series on how we're going to use all Harbor Freight stuff to paint this bug. We're going to start on this video showing you how I get dry air to our paint guns. And then part two is going to be prepping it and shooting it with Harbor Freight's Black Widow spray gun. Let's first though get over to the small barn and let me show you how we're going to set up an air dryer system. All right, welcome to the small barn over here at the NTD Racing Ranch. This is kind of where we store all of our stuff that we're doing work on, and we're gonna build a paint booth in. The stuff that we'll be painting with, I use all of the Summit line of products. I've been using these for a while. In fact, this clear coat is like 10 years old, and I use it on a GTM that I built. Ended up selling that thing at Barrett Jackson. We'll see if that stuff's got a shelf life, hopefully not. We'll shoot some uh, primer on, and then we'll be shooting on some base coat, then the clear coat, and what we're gonna be using for that, and I'll show you this in the next video is the back black widow spectrum from harbor freight uh hopefully a really nice gun we'll see how it works this is my old gun i think it's a walcom geo fx92 worked really well i didn't take really great care of it um, i did take the pressure gauge off of my old gun i put it on the new gun and then we have some other stuff here like the spectrum universal paint system and you get all this stuff again from harbor freight as well as the uh, the gun a really excellent value for what you're getting you know, if it puts down as nice a paint job as this thing does, then this thing is an amazing value. We will test that out in the next video. So to make air pressure, let's just start right here with our new McGraw 29 gallon, 165 PSI uh, oil uh, compressor. And so basically, uh, again, this is just from Harbor Freight. It'll be pushing air out. And you know, whenever you compress air, it heats up and then when it cools down, it has the potential to condense, water comes off of it. So you need to find a way to dry it. And where we're gonna run our, our dryer is basically off of this hose right here, this short three foot hose we got from Harbor Freight. We're gonna go ahead and connect it up to our copper tube air dryer. We're gonna run it across the top of our barn and then down over to a reel over here. Let's take a look at those parts and they're right here. So uh, this is the copper tube we're gonna use, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna sweat this stuff. I think sweat it in. I'm not sure what terms they use. I've only done this one other time, but it works. So you can have confidence. If I can do it, you can do it too. This is half inch tube. I got this stuff from Home Depot. I don't know if you can get it on Amazon, but I will check it out because I do find that if you buy stuff in bulk on Amazon, you just get a better deal. Um, and so stuff like these fittings right here were just a lot less to get on Amazon. And I will put the link for those in the description below. So how this thing will start is it's gonna start over at the compressor with that three inch regular compressor uh, hose, just like this one. And it'll go through your standard compressor fitting with a one quarter inch NPT. And so what this thing is being mated to, to get to this brass fitting, I'll see if I can find one of these on Amazon. Otherwise, this is what you're getting from Home Depot. And that allows you to go from the air fitting to this fitting right here, which will be starting the whole sweating in process to the one half inch tube. It's gonna go around a 90 degree elbow. I got off of Amazon, 90 degree elbow, and then to a T fitting. That T fitting will let some of the air kick off and go over another one of those cooling loops. But this bottom bottom one is going to come down to an air chuck. It could be this kind of one over here with one of these valves. I put an air chuck in there with one of those valves down here so that I could actually pull air off here if I wanted to on the, the shop. And then as I open this valve, it should let any water that's collected in this part of this T, it let that water out. And then only the dry air continues down the line. We're going to do that twice. And then we're going to kick the air off. It's going to go through some more fittings through another hose into this Harbor Freight descant filter. We'll get that thing set up. And then finally into this Merlin reel. Now what we're gonna be using is um, one of these kits right here. And these are super easy. Again, a link for this in the description. Um, this is some flux. This is what you basically prep the surface of the, the tube with. Here is what you prep the inside of the tube with, a tube cutter, and then just some of that solder. And then to heat it up, I use map gas. I think this probably overheats a little bit, maybe too much. You could probably use like one of the butane torches or something uh, like that. Um, and then we have some fittings here. Again, links for all those in the description. And then how I'm gonna mount those to the wall. I had these things, I don't know, saved up from some other project. And I'll basically use some screws to attach that to the wood around the, uh, the shop in there. 
Um, and then finally, the air will go all the way around. It'll come out on this Merlin reel, again, something from Harbor Freight. Uh, and we'll see how well this thing works as we, uh, we test all this stuff out. So let's do a couple of them right here on the trailer so you can kind of see you know, right in front of you what that sweating in process looks like. And then I'll go ahead and hop up on the ladder and we'll start putting all those tubes in across the top of the barn. All right, let's go through this. This is the process I learned before. Uh, basically, what we need to do is start by kind of preparing the tubes that we're going to be using uh, by taking, you know, the base of the shine off. So we're going to use some of the sandpaper that you can get. I think any kind of sandpaper will work. This just happened to be something I got from the hardware store. And you're going to go ahead and run, basically twist this thing in your hand, twist the tube in your hand with the sandpaper in there until you get all the shine off where you take all of this coating off of the copper tube and then the end should look something like this and then you need to start also do the same thing for the inside of the fitting now you can use one of these things right here take these things off i saw somebody had a really cool technique where he took some side snips and he went ahead and cut the end of this thing off and then he took this and he chucked it up in his drill and it made the process a lot faster to clean the inside of the fitting. And then the same thing with the inside of that fittings, you wanna make sure that whole coating is off there. And I'll just get all three of the sides right now while I'm here. All right, now that, that part is done, we need to apply the flux. It, this is what it looks like. Uh, there might be other kinds, this is the only one I've got. A little brush here. And basically what you're gonna do is you're going to apply flux to the inside of the fittings on both of them everywhere where those pipes are gonna be mated with each other. And I guess the flux is gonna pull the solder into the joint. And the flux will melt out of there. I'm not sure if you could put too much on. Somebody could probably put it in the comments whether it's possible to put too much on. Or if there's somebody watching this, you know, like 90% of the people are watching this going like, oh, this is new information. I love this. And there's that 10% who've been doing this as professionals their whole life. And they're like, you could do this better. And I'm happy to put, if you guys put that in the comments. So if you're the 90%, check out the comments because usually the smart people put all their stuff there. But this has been working for me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put both of the fittings on now that it, with the, the flux on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply some heat to this thing. Now let me show you how I'm gonna go ahead and apply the solder. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of prep the solder with give myself a little length so I'm not putting my hand too close to the heat. I'm gonna take my map gas, I'm gonna heat the bottom of the fitting, starting that and I'm gonna kind of start heating all around just the fitting part. And once I think that the fitting is hot enough, which the map gas, it just doesn't take too long because this thing gets, gets so hot. I'm going to go ahead and start feeding in some of the, the solder, that joint. And what we should see is that once that's all done, is that the solder has fed itself all the way in and around that joint. I probably put too much solder on, but it did fill the whole joint in, so I'm feeling pretty good about that one. We'll go ahead and clean this up with a towel to get the rest of the flux off, and then that one should be good. All right, just so I don't gloss over everything, and I don't, but I also don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but if you've never used, I think they call this stuff Teflon tape before. Let me just kind of give you my techniques for using it. So I have the brass fitting that I want to basically make airtight. So I'm gonna use this stuff called Teflon tape to make the seals airtight, if you will. So what I do is I hold it in my hand such that it unreels that way, and I will start on the threads. I basically will try to overlap just a little bit to where you can kind of see the tape goes over the end of the threads, which so that when I feed it onto the next one, it doesn't just push the Teflon tape back. And I'll start wrapping it around, kind of holding it tight as I pull it out of the reel. And I just kind of keep wrapping around maybe two times around there. And when I get down to the end, I've decided there's enough Teflon tape on it. What I'll do is I will hold the reel and I'll just basically keep twisting this one until it snaps the, uh, the tape off. And then I will wrap it around. And that's a pretty job, but it'll probably hold pretty good. And then once it's there, now I can go ahead and feed it into the next fitting and tighten that down. And that should make a nice airtight seal. 
So in putting this thing up, I assembled most of it on the table that I had there. And then I brought the big parts up onto the wall to hang it onto the wall. What I did is I put a laser level across the top of the wall and then I put some nails in so that I could just kind of hook the tubes onto the nails. And then the parts that would go together, you know, usually it was an elbow. And so when I had a choice on which side to put the elbow on, I put the elbow on the part that I was bringing up to the wall. That way I could basically hook the elbow onto the existing piece that was on there. And that allowed, it held it in place while I went up there and soldered it and it made it pretty easy process and it minimized the time I had to go up and down that ladder. All right, here's the moment of truth. I've got everything pretty much mocked up and completed as far as the copper should be sealed. It's not connected to the wall yet. It's just got nails that it's resting on just so it'd be easy to take it back down if this doesn't work, but let's go ahead and connect up the air. We got about 70 PSI and see if this will hold pressure. Sounds pretty good. Sounds like we got a little leak over here. And I think that that is this fitting right here. You can kind of hear it. 10 bucks says it's that, and I can't see any leaks anywhere else. Maybe squirt a little bit of water in there, but overall I think it's pretty good. You can tell all this is holding air. This is where we'll release the, the uh, water out of there. I think it looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and check out that fitting, but uh, besides that, I'm ready to finish up and uh, secure this to the wall permanently. All right, let me show you what we got with our spray painting booth. And now that we're done, maybe some lessons learned. First, let's start with the part like the big build here was just this air dryer system. I'm really happy with it. I think it's got enough as far as drying ability for Colorado where we already have some dry air. You could probably go more vertical tubes over here. We have about 60 feet of, of uh, copper tubes we use on this project and we'll see how that does. If it doesn't work, then I'll be the first one to tell you. Uh, it kind of goes through here and through this desk and filter. I think what is funny here is that, you know, the filter says come in here and out here. And then this thing goes in over here for the, the reel. So if you can work your way from left to right, as opposed to the way I did it, but you know, it'll all go together. Uh, I do have this blue hose here just temporarily because I ordered another five foot hose to go from there over to the reel. Some things I really liked, I thought this filter went together really easily and nice and i'll be interested to see how that works there's some blue beads in there and apparently they turn pink once they are saturated with water we'll see how that works and then i really like this merlin reel it is hefty i mean the metal on it is some thick stuff i would probably put that at maybe 11 or 12 gauge steel so there's nothing that is cheap about this thing uh, from harbor freight and you can kind of hear you pull it out it doesn't take too much force and once it starts clicking you can release it and it'll stop in any one of those spots you pull past the clicks and then it'll just reel itself back in really easy to use it's not going to put a whole bunch of force on the wall so i'm really happy about that and having the 50 feet of hose from that um, reel will allow us to basically paint in this space uh, as much as we want to. It'll even allow us to take it outside because on a calm day with no wind, you know, in the morning or something like that, I think painting outside is an option. If there is wind, we'll paint in here. We'll just kind of cover maybe the floor a little bit. Well, definitely before we paint, we would go over this with water and kind of flush out any of the dirt out of here. We did have some additional lights from my, the speed shop when I took down the old lights to put up more bright lights at the speed shop. Well, we put the other lights over here. So now I think we have a lot of light because a good paint job is just so much easier when you have a lot of light in your space. But I think this is gonna work out pretty good. And I'm really happy with the way that the NTD Racing Ranch paint booth went together with all Harbor Freight parts. The next episode is we're gonna test it out by putting some paint down on Dung Beetle. I think it's called, gonna be called Dung Beetle. That's what we call it right now. It is our 1973 VW Bug and I cannot wait to get that thing in blue paint. Man, Harbor Freight, these guys are completely rocking it. If you look through our speed shop, you're gonna see our press brake and all kinds of tools that we use that are Harbor Freight tools. 
you know, if you look on a race truck, we're running their road shock lights and those things have been amazing. As good as any light I've ever put on a race truck. And then, you know, just the tools here that we're going to be using for our paint booth, this, uh, black widow spray gun, this HTE, it just, it feels good in your hand. Just everything looks quality, the anodized parts. Harbor Freight's doing a great job and uh, and I'm a huge fan. So this is the first air dryer system I have made. So if you like this video, you might want to check out this video also. Anyway, next video, we are using this paint booth and we're going to be spraying paint on our class 11 bug. We'll see you next week. Take care of yourself.